education for Gaston County. <clears throat> I'm Kenny Lutz, chairman of the board. To my left is Jeff Ramsey, vice chair, and I would like the board members to introduce themselves, starting from my left with Mr. Cotton. Oh, Ms. Ken I'm Ms. Cherry. Refer to Ms. Cherry. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Dot Cherry, at large member. Kevin Collier, uh, River Bend Township. Good evening, Dot Guthrie, Gastonia Township. Catherine Roberts, Dallas Township. Mark Upchurch, Cheerful Down Township. Hey, Chris Howe, South Point. Lee Dedman, Gastonia Township. Thank you. I, on behalf of the board, I would like to welcome everyone that is attending tonight, and we appreciate the, the great crowd that we have. Second of all, I would like to thank Mr. Carper for all your help with getting this ready to, to do. I know you didn't do it, your staff did it, so I'm going to say thank you to all your staff, Mr. Carper. Um, our first order of business is to have the prayer and the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. If you all join me in prayer. Oh, gracious Father, we thank you for all the bounty that you have provided to us. As we come to gather tonight, we have the honor of recognizing so many great accomplishments. We know it all begins with you. We thank you for all that you have provided. We ask that you continue to watch over us, Lord. Guide this board as it makes the decisions that affect so many children and our whole community. We just ask that you be with us and protect us. In thy holy name, amen. 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 Now I'd like to invite the WA Best Student Council to come forward. Their president is Evan Friday, Vice Presidents Lily Smith and Colin Williams. The treasurer is Riley Rouse, and they will lead us in the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Our next order of business is to adopt the agenda of board members. You have the agenda in front of you, and I will need a motion for this. So moved. Mr. Ramsey has made the motion. Ms. Cherry has seconded it. Is there any discussion? All in favor? And it is unanimous. 
Mr. Booker, the next item is good news, and this is always a good thing to have so much good news that we don't know where to start. <laughs> well, yes, sir, and I will prepare everyone. This is our last board meeting before the end of school, so we have a lot of folks to recognize tonight. First, I would like to begin with the student who has not only received local attention, but has received national recognition for his accomplishments. So if Jimmy Johnson from Cherville High School would please come forward. As he walks forward, I hope everyone will recognize that we have the National Volunteer Fire Council's Junior Firefighter of the Year. <laughs> this award is given to recognize outstanding dedication, commitment, and achievement as a youth member. And what you need to recognize, folks, is that since 2011, he has given over 500 hours of service. Last year, he received the department's Top Gun Award for responding to more calls than any other volunteer. His teachers, coaches, as well as the local fire chief, Jeff Cash, just speak to how remarkable a young man and what talked about his effort. But he doesn't leave it there. He's also the starting center fielder and leadoff hitter for the Ironmen in Cherubble and has a 3.3 grade point average. This summer, he will complete the fire certification and will just pretend to pursue his dream to be a firefighter. Jimmy, we thank you, and Mr. Upchurch. And Cherville is not only known for the baseball, I'm very proud of that uh, all the uh, accomplishments they've uh, received this year, but also our, our, our fire department is <coughs> top number one in the state. It, very, it really is, and we would like to present you with this certificate recognition to Jimmy Johnson and Cherville High School Junior Firefighter of the Year, National Volunteer Fire Council signed by our Chairman Mr. Key Lutz and our Superintendent. Congratulations. <laughs> Mr. Chairman, members of the board, next we'd like to ask Scott Harrell to come forward. He is the head basketball coach at Cherville High School. Mm -hmm. 
In February, Mr. Harrell earned his 300th win as a head coach. In Gaston County history, only eight other coaches have done that. But what's really impressive about Mr. Harrell's record is he did it in 15 seasons. And you can do the quick math. That means he averaged 20 wins a season, which shows great consistency. True to form of many great coaches, he contributes to the success of the students and the community of Cherryville. He has currently assumed the role of athletic director and continues as a business education teacher. So we wanted to recognize you tonight for all that you have done. And this certificate is a certificate of recognition to Scott Harrell, outstanding achievement for the 300 career coaching wins in basketball. Signed by our chairman, Mr. Key Lutz, and our superintendent, Mr. Cooper. Thank you, thank you for all you're doing for Cherryville and the school, I mean, the students at Cherryville High School. Thanks, sir. Well, Mr. Upchurch, <laughs> uh, we need Leroy Montgomery to come forward. Anyone in Cherville knows Leroy Montgomery. You cannot go to any event at the school that he is not there. As Mr. Harold just said as he was going by, Leroy's been with me for all those wins. Um, he does everything around the school. And just recently, in recognition of all of the work he has done, he received the Keep Gastonia Beautiful High School Custodian of the Year Award. And we're grateful for all the years of service you've given to Cherville High, and we are appreciative that someone has recognized all that service. Mr. Upchurch. Mr. Carlson. That's why I call him all the time, Mr. Carlson. He was a former assistant to Cherville High School. And uh, no matter where you go, like you said, no matter where you go in the community, uh, Leroy is working, is working not only for the students in Cherville High School or the students at any of these buildings, but he's working for the community to get there. And we appreciate everything that you do. <laughs> the, this certificate is the uh, certificate of recognition that Leroy McGonagher at Cherryville High School, High School Studying of the Year, he gets on the year, and all the guests of the county school the year. Signed by our uh, chairman, Mr. Kenny Lewis, and our superintendent. Well, members of the board, we're going to switch to the other end of the county. 
we are fortunate that as our state education board meets and begins to form policy for the next two years, we will have a representative there. I'd like to invo invite South Point Junior, Grace Russell, to come forward, please. Grace has been appointed by Governor Pat McCroy to serve as one of two student advisors to the North Carolina State Board of Education. She'll be responsible for offering a student's perspective on issues the board considers at its monthly meetings. At a first meeting, Grace has already been asked about standardized testing and her thoughts. She continues with the responsibility she'll develop a presentation that focuses on topics of interest to students and present the information to the state board. Grace has accomplished much in her academic career, and we're especially appreciative of this leadership role that she is choosing for the state of North Carolina. Congratulations, Grace. Mr. Howell. Um, Grace Russell puts smart in smart. You know people like that, they just put smart in smart. Uh, my daughter's in the same class that she's in. And every time my daughter would go home, like, so are you number one? She's like, no, Dad, we're all chasing Grace. Uh, not only that, not only is she a, a very, very uh, smart young lady, but I've also had the privilege of watching her play soccer for the last couple of years, and she's an outstanding athlete as well. And so I'm happy about a couple things. One, we're about the same height. Um, so I'm worried about her being six foot twenty, like some of the other ones they give me. And two, she's going to help in, enact all the policies that this board would like to see take place at the state level because she's going to have that much authority and power, right? I hope so. You know, so she'll be running that place within the next couple weeks. Grace, this uh, certificate says, uh, presented to Grace Russell, South Point High School, North Carolina State Board of Education, student advisor, signed by our chair, Kenny Lutz, and our superintendent, Mr. Booker. Great job. Members of the board, this is a unique opportunity for you as a board. We get to recognize the finalist for the state moot court competition from the same school district. I'd like to invite Jordan Franco and Lexi McAllister from South Point High School, Kayla Viana and Katie Perello from the Highland School of Technology forward. So what is unique is that typically these folks would have eliminated one another in one of the regions. But because of the quality of these two teams, they were both invited to the state competition and they both performed well to where they met in the state finals. The judges found Jordan and Lexi's arguments most convincing and named them winners. This continues a tradition of success in the moot court at South Point. This is their fifth state championship. So congratulations to Jordan and Lexi we're proud to call you the North Carolina Moot Champions. Kayla and Katie, we also congratulate you for being the runner-up state ch champions. So for all four of you, thank you very much for what you did to represent our county so well. You can see we're a pretty well-rounded well county, and you could argue that with me, but I'm going to step back and let them argue with you, and I think you will lose. Um, again, this is a certificate of recognition presented to you guys, and I'll give it to you individually. The outstanding achievement at the North Carolina Moot Court, uh, dated May 18th, signed by our board chair, Mr. Kenny Lutz, and our superintendent, Mr. Jeffrey Booker. Also, as part of that, 
Um, because South Point won the state championship, we have a plaque for South Point High School. It says 2015 state champion, North Carolina Moot Court, signed by our board chair and the superintendent as well. So I'd like to ask the administration from South Point and their uh, one who got them there, if you'll go ahead and come on up. We're going to present this to you as well. <laughs> Can't be a winner without a leader, so great leaders in that school and both schools. Now we'll turn to our host school, Forest View High School. I'd like to ask senior Felicia Berry to come forward. She received the North Carolina High School Athletic Association's Performance of the Week Award in recognition of her outstanding efforts at the 3A Western Regional Track and Field Championship. She earned not one, not two, but three gold medals in the regionals for the 200 meter race as an individual and as the anchor for the 4x100 and 4x200 relay teams. She also finished second in the 100 meter race. Her strong performance led Forest View to a fourth place finish in the region. She also continued to the state 3A championship meet where her relay team earned silver medals in the 4x100 and 4x200 races. She also finished eighth overall in the 100 meter race. Felicia, congratulations on an outstanding track season. Track star I was not, but not only does it take Steve, it takes Vanessa to pass that baton, get out of the box, because I've seen it. So you have to have a lot of practice, you have to have a lot of spirit, and you've got to be practiced. So I know Farsi was proud, we're proud, and we have to get some time. For you for outstanding achievement and track performance of the week award, signed by our chairman Kenny Lutz and our uh, superintendent of school Jeffrey Booker. And thank you. One picture. Stop. <laughs> <laughs> oh, we have to turn this up. Get some money and I'll hold it. <laughs>
like to invite Coach Dan Gint forward, and if he'd bring his team with him, please. <laughs> we have with us, folks, a man who had a lot of pressure on him this year. Mr. Gint had the pleasure of inheriting a team that had been three-time state champions, and they would look to go for their fourth championship. These four gentlemen in front of you are Avery Price, who finished tied third in the state. Avery's in the middle. And then next to Mr. Gent is Drew Jurors, who has been on all three of the previous, or excuse me, two of the previous three state championship teams. And then next to Avery, we have Madison Duffy. And then we have the new kid to town, <laughs> Austin Stanford. So, Mr. Sanford, how did it feel to join a team that had the pressure of three state championships? Uh, there was a lot of pressure. <laughs> <laughs> What's impressive, there were also two other members of the team, uh, Ian Cherry, who could not be with us, as well as uh, another young man, Will Booker. And uh, <laughs> all six of these golfers are underclassmen, Mr. Gent. So what does that mean, sir? <laughs> <laughs> But it's a great tradition to have here, and Forest View High School, we congratulate you on your fourth consecutive 3A golf championship. Ms. Chair, if we could invite any of the parents. I know I saw the Duffies come in. Mr. Duffy helps a lot with the planning for the team and the various trips. They could come forward as well. Any parents? And Mr. Parker. Yeah. <laughs> 
That's his life, boy. One more. Is this confession? No, it is. Mr. Chairman, last night I had the opportunity to attend the Bloomy Awards in Charlotte. And I'll encourage everyone, we had several of our board members, I know Mr. Collier, Mr. Ramsey were there. If you ever want to see just the amazing art talent that exists in our community, it is incredible to go to the Belt Theater and watch. They plan out and reviewed 39 different performances done by high school theater groups. And they pick the top six and allow them to come and perform, but they also recognize various other performances. One of our local families is a great benefactor of this. It's the Doctor family. And their foundation created two $10,000 scholarships that are given each year. And it is a renewable scholarship. So that the lucky winners get the $10,000 for all four years. We are the, the Blumenthal and the Bloomies. It is the largest individual scholarship in any theater organization in the country. So it's a great commitment on the Dr. family to really see the arts prosper. Well, this year, we are fortunate that of all the surrounding counties, Aaron Vickery, a student here at Forest View High School, is one of the two recipients of the Mary Doctor Performing Arts Scholarship. So if I could ask her to come forward. And what is unique is this scholarship is very competitive and it's based on all of the potential art talents. So Aaron, I hate to put you on the spot, but would you share what your talent is? So she does costume designs and if you've been to any of our uh, local county art contest, she's been a successful participant in that as well. This competition is very, uh, highly sought after in the community and it is not uh, one to deal. And I had the pleasure of sitting with the doctors last night and this doctor just kept speaking over and over about how lucky we were to have such a talented student in our community. So Aaron, we wanted to recognize you. to hear if the rest of your family if they could come forward and join the picture would be great.
Many of you know that each year the Gaston Gazette holds its Best of Gaston contest and invites citizens to vote for business and professionals who they feel do an outstanding job. This year, Forest View High School took home two awards, and both the recipients are here tonight. So I'd like to ask Chad Carper and Grace McKinnon to come forward. They were both recognized by the Gazette as the best in their profession. So Mr. Carper and Grace, we appreciate the recognition by the Gazette of your outstanding work for our system. Ms. Chair. Well, that's impressive, too. I, I guess that is. And to come out of my own edition, because that's the one I did. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, that is, that is wonderful. Um, here's some more. Are you going to put this in, there, in your wall of fame as well, Chad? Yeah, that's what it's at. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'd like to do that in my office, it's your choice whether you want to keep this in or put it on the wall. Anyway, congratulations. That is a wonderful honor. That's the community. And it's an honor for us that people take that time. We definitely do. Pictures. Oh, yeah. Let me break up the blood. And Grace, is it true that <laughs> Grace, is it true that you bought, brought a treat for us tonight? I do have a treat for you that are waiting in the hallway. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.
cinnamon, where are you going to run to? Where are you going to go when it's time to die? Where are you going to be on a judgment day? Will you see the light on the other side? Cinnamon, where are you going to run to? Where are you going to go when it's time to die? Where are you going to be on a judgment day? Thank you, children, and Ms. McKinnon, so very much for that. And, Mr. Chairman, that concludes the good news. Thank you, Mr. Booker. It's always great to have so much good news uh, across the county. Thank you very much. The next item on the agenda is public expression, and I would like to outline the rules before we get started uh, on this. Citizens wishing to make a comment and who have completed a request to speak form will be recognized by the chair and then requested to step to the microphone for their comments. Citizens will state their name and address for the record. Comments will be limited to three minutes when there are two or more speakers on one issue. The members of the board do not respond to public expression and public expression does not allow for comments on confidential or personnel matters. The chair shall rule on all points of order during public expression and we do have three people signed up tonight. The first person signed up is Chaz Adam. Good evening, my name is Shay Adams. I'm, so, I'm sorry, I <laughs> That's apologize. No problem. My address is 801 Freedom Mill Road, Gastonia, North Carolina, 28052. Good evening, school board members. Bringing you greetings from the west side of Gastonia, I am Shay Adams, a proud 1994 graduate of Hunter Huss High School. I'm also the mother of an upcoming 2017 graduate of Hunter Huss. I have respectively sat on several committees and boards at Hunter Huss High School and learned of the needs of the student athletes that aren't being met. Reaching out to a few parents, community members, and students, we collectively, collectively decided to, that a petition is needed to be in order to express our concerns for the safety of our athletes. On April 17, 2015, I posted a petition on change.org and the responses were overwhelming. We received over 900 signatures in 24 hours. Presently, there are 1,529 signatures and counting. 
of present and past Huskies, family and friends of Huskies, and community members. Last week when spe speaking at the commissioner's meeting, the chairman affectionately informed me that he was well aware of my petition because he was receiving the emails every time someone signed or left a message. So my apologies, Mr. Booker and Mr. Lutz. But just in case you missed all of those emails, you could have read about the petition in the front page of the Gaston Gazette on April 23rd, 2015. In chairing the Fix Our School project, we have prioritized our greatest to least needs for ensuring safety of the students at Hunter Huss. Repairing our track. We haven't hosted a track meet in over a decade. It has cracks with grass that has grown through it. There is no lanes. There, the field, there's no field equipment, and we need to increase the lanes from six to eight to be able to host the meet. Restoring our tennis court, it also has cracks in grass and faded paint, and it also is in desperate need of new nets. Fencing our practice football field, hazardous materials have been littered on the field, and it is the only practice field that does not have a fence around it. I would like to leave you with a few comments left on the change.org petition. Donald Pentman of Deep Gap, North Carolina. As a former school board member and Hunter Huss graduate, I know that this is an important need. Also, Austin Lutz of Gastonia, North Carolina. My name is Austin Lutz. I attended Hunter Huss High School from 2004 to 2008. While there, I watched this school change and mold and provide future to thousands of kids that are now doing wonderful okay thank you <laughs> thank you the next person is Erica real <coughs> My name is Erica Rill. I live at 2000 Linwood Road, Gastonia, North Carolina, 28052. I'm also the proud parent of a 2017 Husky graduate. Uh, today I'm going to read a recommendation letter from former member and past chairperson of the Gaston County School Board, Jennifer P. Davis. To members of the Gaston County Board of Education, I have been asked by Mrs. Shea Adams and others to offer words of encouragement and support for, the, for their mission and passion to repair and or upgrade some of the sports facilities at Hunter Huss High School. I wholeheartedly support their request for the needed repairs at Hunter Huss and along with more than 1,500 others have signed their petition. As a former member and past chairperson of the Gaston County School Board, I know firsthand that the diff of the difficulties of trying to balance needs with available funds. There is never enough money to meet the needs of our schools, and despite all our efforts, the lack of money often winds up causing our students, faculty, and families to assume a position of competitive, competitiveness combined with attempts to blame and shame for things over which we have no control. It makes your job far more difficult and does little to, contrib to contribute to creating and sustaining a culture of community as it relates to our school system. I have not so pleasant flashbacks of the facility study that was done during my first term on the board when a committee identified more than $250 million worth of repairs, upgrades, and other needed items for our schools. The needs came as, as a result of the years of neglect and patch and go fixes because of the lack of funds. Some of those needs, I dare say, still exist and our talented, hardworking personnel have done an outstanding job of keeping our facilities as safe as possible for our children, but the needs continue and those identified at Hunter Huss are among them. As a former board member, mother of a former Hunter Huss employee, grandmother of a 2015 graduating senior and athlete, and of an incoming freshman and friend of many at Hunter Huss, I employ you to do two things. One, make an effort, if you have not already done so, to personally survey the track, tennis courts, football field, football practice field at Hunter Huss and describe as described in the petition and to submit a formal request for funding the Gaston County Commissioners 
after inviting them to make a personal visit as well. Mrs. Adams and other supporters have already presented this petition to the commissioners who advised them that proper procedure was to have the request submitted to them from the school board. I join their request asking you to do just that. Thank you for all that you do for the children of Gaston County. Sincerely, Jennifer P. Davis. Yes, I got it all in. <laughs> Thank you for the opportunity to speak. Thank you. The next person is Michael Meeks. I'm Michael Meeks, uh, 1000 Newcastle Road, a guest on your North Carolina. Uh, I had a laid up, and I'm going to jump around a little bit to hit some of the things that Ms. Adams didn't have a chance to. Uh, the commissioner's meeting that we went to, that is online. You can view it. If you go around to the 34-minute mark, you can see where uh, Shay spoke as well as myself. If you fast forward to the end, you can see the overwhelming response from the commissioners themselves at the way they were disappointed, the way Hunter Huss is de deteriorating, and nothing's being done about it. And that's all there for you to, to see yourself. But also, um, I work with kids a lot. I've been coaching basketball for 13 years. Uh, some of the kids I coach go to Hunter Huss. Some of these kids wouldn't attend school if it wasn't for a sport. They keep their grades up in order to play sports. Sports isn't the most important thing in a child's life, but it does help them. It builds self-character, teaches them how to work well with others, things that are going to help them later on in life. Uh, some of the kids get aggravated from us when they go to another school for a track meet and they say, well, okay, lucky you won, but you can't even win at your own place. They can't host an event there themselves. And that breaks the child down. And we're just asking for help for these kids to get them where they need to be. And sports is one way that that is done. And then we're just asking for your help to, to, with that. Thank you. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mr. Chair. Yes, sir, Mr. Howe. Before we move on, I, this isn't the first time that I've heard of this petition. I'm sure this whole board has heard of this petition. It's the first time. is the first time I've heard about the conditions um, in the last few weeks. Um, people took the time to, to draft a petition, to take it to the county commissioners, uh, to bring it to this board. Um, I'd like to see that maybe we uh, appoint the Facilities Committee, which is chaired by Mr. Collier, is maybe putting that on our agenda to take a look at the complaints that have been made tonight and through that petition. And if the county commissioners are behind it, see what they're willing to uh, to do and what we can do. I, I just think we owe it to them if they're going to they're going to bring it to us to at least look at it and for them to think to know that we're going to look at it. So, thank you, just Mr. Comment. Yes. Well, I will make note of that and I will discuss that with Mr. Collier. <clears throat> the next item on the agenda is the approval and correction of our minutes. This is an action item. I will need a motion and a second. I have, we have two different sets, February the 17th, 2015, and April the 20th, 2015. Ms. Cherry has put that in the form of a motion. Do I have a second? Ms. Mr. Ramsey has seconded. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, it is unanimous. The next item on the agenda is the Curriculum and Instruction Committee Report. Mr. Chair, Ms. Roberts will be okay. presenting that report this evening. Okay, thank you. The Curriculum and Instruction Committee met on May 4th, preceding the Board of Education work session. Those in attendance were Doc Guthrie Chair, Catherine Roberts, Dot Cherry, Bill Cook, Jackie Arboro, Gary Ford, Brent Boone, Shelley Bullard, Brett Buchanan, and Risa Hoyle. Highlights from the committee meeting include our discussion of the 10 point grading scale and the possibility of expanding this to grades K through 8 in Gaston County, as the state has adopted this for grades 9 through 12 beginning the 2015 2016 school year. The committee heard reports from the CNI staff members regarding this possibility. This topic will be brought to the full board for further discussion. Honor roll criteria for each level, elementary, middle, and high school was also discussed by the committee. We heard updates from the following district-wide plans, Title I, Title II, Title III, 
academically and intellectually gifted and career and technical education. The full board also had the opportunity to hear these reports about these plans from the CNI staff during our work session May 4th. Our consideration of these plans for approval is on the consent agenda tonight. These are the key items we discussed during our committee meeting. Thank you very much. The next item is the operations committee report and I'll refer to Mr. Collier. Mr. Chair, I'd like to point out the members of our committee. Uh, they're all down at the other end of the table. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Lee Dedman, Mr. Chris Howell, and Mr. Mark Upchurch and myself. Um, and attendance of the meetings were myself, Mr. Upchurch, and Mr. Dedman. Um, the staff members that were present were uh, Frank Fields, Glenn Bratton, Chip Irby, Danny Garrett, Karen Barrier, Christina Harley, Marcella Calvert, Gary Hoskins, and Mr. Mark Holler. I won't go into the detail of where we uh, reviewed past minutes of uh, our, our previous two meetings, but uh, Mr. Frank Fields was there and he gave us an update on the school nutrition's uh, annual report. He uh, shared a lot of things and we had a, lot, a long discussion about many items in school nutrition and, and lunches just in general, but the most important thing uh, is a federal mandate that we have to increase the meal prices and um, that'll be brought to the full board. Um, there was an action agenda item that was drafted for, um, by Mr. Holler that will be presented to the board. Next thing we talked about were camera replacement projects at Bessemer City High School, Bessemer City Middle, and Highland and Webb Street. Danny Garrett reported that Bessemer City High and Bessemer City Middle cameras are installed and running. Highland and Webb Street will be working by the end of May. The, overhead pro the overall project is ahead of schedule. Um, the money that the commissioners uh, gave us, we are trying to um, get that money spent so that we can have a lot of projects done before school starts this summer. Um, of those, uh, Mr. Irby, Danny Garrett, Mark Holler presented the following. The South Point Carpentry Edition, uh, the contract's been bid and accepted and will begin work soon. The McAdenville Roof Replacement, the port purchase order has been issued and the work will begin on Monday, June the 15th. The Brookside Chiller Replacement. Purchase order has been issued and the work will begin on Monday, June the 15th. You're going to hear me repeat that date a lot because that's when school closes and work will begin as soon as the kids are out of the building. The Holbrook Water and Sewer Replacement. Purchase order has been issued and the work will begin Monday, June the 15th. Mount Holly Water Replacement. Purchase order has been issued and the work will begin Monday, June the 15th. The Best and Forest View Lift Stations. Uh, lift station replacements, the purchase orders have been issued and will begin Monday, June the 15th. There are other intercom replacements for Bessemer City and Sherwood that are due on May the 8th. Mr. Holler updated the uh, committee on the new life and safety project that's being implemented at all the schools. Uh, there's a wall mounted key safe that was researched by Mr. Jack Harrelson and the building's ground manager, Mr. Glenn Bratton, the security uh, compliance officer. Thanks to Mr. Harrelson and Mr. Bratton for reducing our total cost of the project, which was about $2,500 per school for uh, people that are familiar with fire boxes, the Knox, Knox box, very, very expensive. They found a very, very uh, inexpensive solution to allow police and safety people into the building without having to buy a Knox box. Update on our school projects. The architects and contracts. Mr. Harler reported that uh, we are working with each of our architects, Boomerang Design, Stan Anthony and Rick Brown, and then LS3P, Paul Boney and David Bellamy. On, we've got our contracts signed and they are at work. Uh, staff is now at work with the architects going over the specifications for each of the school. Uh, we have surveying that are out at the sites doing surveying now. And we talked about the expectations of, of reporting in our committee and our committee decided that the architects need to attend uh, periodically uh, at least once a month and give us updates as a full board as their uh, progress uh, as they start getting um, uh, ground broken, if you will. Um, Stuart Kramer High School requests the name two classroom spaces. This request was discussed in our meeting. Um, our future meeting uh, schedule was discussed and uh, that's available for anybody who wants to see what our future meetings are. And other business, Mr. Holler expressed sympathy of the death of a Gaston County School Transportation employee, Ms. Tonda Dellinger. 
She'd been a great employee in our transportation department for a long time. Uh, there's road work which affects the traffic pattern at Highland School of Technology. It's begin, uh, it will begin soon at Radio Street at Highway 321. The Highland staff, the SRO, the Gastonia Police Department, and City Engineering Department, and Gaston County School staff are all working together to try to make this traffic pattern as smooth as possible around the Highland School of Technology as they begin to work on 321. Pest control information was shared with our committee and we had discussion. And that's pretty much what we've done. We've been busy and our next meeting is scheduled for May the 26th at 4.30. Yeah. And I'll be glad to entertain any questions, Mr. Chair. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Collier. Any questions for Mr. Collier? Seeing no questions, we'll move on to the next item. North Carolina Digital Learning Process Rubric. And I think Ms. Matson will be the presenter on this. Good evening, Chairman Lutz, Board of Education members, and Superintendent Booker. North Carolina is committed to providing personalized digital age instruction to our K-12 students. Recent legislative actions address preparing educators for digital learning, providing digital resources, and ensuring technology access across all schools, as well as the goals of the new State Board of Education Strategic Plan. The transition to the digital age education system will use the power of modern technologies and will impact all aspects of education. This includes the content students learn, the methods teachers use, when and where learning takes place, where resources are required, and how success is defined and measured. Systematic changes in K-12 education are required in order to effectively prepare students for college and careers in this rapidly changing, interconnected, technology-driven world. North Carolina, De Public North Carolina Department of Public Instruction required each LEA to submit a digital learning rubric to determine the readiness in five different areas. NCDPI will prepare a plan that is due to us on August 1st of 2015. The digital teaching and learning standards will be developed by July of 2017 and then they will be implemented in the state. Mrs. Roxy Miller, our, our Assistant Chief Technology Officer, will provide you with an update of the North Carolina Digital Learning Progress Rubric. Good evening, Chairman Lutz, members of the board, and Superintendent Booker. The digital learning plan came to fruition as a result of some legislation passed by North Carolina, and you can see that here, uh, beginning with the textbook to digital materials, as well as the digital teaching and learning standards, all of which have to be in place by 2017. The plan, when it comes to fruition in 2015, August 2015, will address this legislation, honor LEA needs, and incorporate elements of digital age teaching and learning. And that you see here. Uh, on the left, well, let's see a little technical difficulty here. Doesn't seem to want to show. So we're just going to move right on. Um, the elements of digital uh, age teaching and learning moves us from the traditional classroom to the modern classroom, where instead of using chalkboards and pencils and pens as much, we're using technology. We're moving from traditional paper and pencil assessments to assessments that are incorporated with everyday teaching and learning and um, project-based as opposed to quiz and test and things of that nature. We brought together a focus group made up of 15 central office employees, eight principals, and 20 teachers. Each of these folks uh, completed a rubric that was sent to us from the Friday Institute, and they worked on it individually. Then we came together on May the 11th and came to a consensus as to where we stood as a district. We have to report these results to DPI. 
And the rubric addressed these five major areas, leadership, professional learning, content and instruction, technology and infrastructure, and data and assessment. And within those five areas, there were 25 key elements. So we had to look at each of those elements and say, all right, where are we as a district? And the kicker to that rubric was, we may be able to check off three or four things in, say, an advanced or a target area, but if you couldn't get all of them, you had to drop back down a level. So we have some room to grow in some areas, but we were very, very successful in areas such as infrastructure, devices for our students, and policies. And those are thanks to you as our Board of Education, because you have really um, stood behind us in the technology department. You've supported our initiatives. We have a very, very strong infrastructure. We have wireless in all of our schools, all of our classrooms. Uh, we are very much ahead of some districts in North Carolina, actually a lot of districts from what I hear in terms of our wireless and our infrastructure. Um, our devices are growing daily with what our kids have access to and our policies are very, very strong in terms of um, our digital teaching and learning. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Any questions from the board? Mr. Chair, I don't have yes. a question, but I just want to make a comment. Yes, ma'am. I just want to uh, commend the technology department on a job well done, being a part of one one school in technology and knowing how important it is to have the resources and the infrastructure. I want you to know that what you presented this evening does show that you're well on your way and I commend you for that and all the hard work that you have put forth in making this happen right now. You're not behind. I think you're one of the uh, leaders in uh, the field of technology and thank you for that. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you very much. We appreciate your information tonight. The next item also will come from Ms. Matson, a advanced system-wide accreditation process report. Gaston County Schools was reaccredited during the 2012-2013 school year. In the second of the fifth year, which is now, we have a cycle where we submit our progress report that states how the district has improved areas which they stated we needed to make improvement. Mr. Derek Jackson, our Chief Accountability Officer, will now provide an overview. Chairman Lutz, Superintendent Booker, members of the board, thank you for allowing me to update you on the accreditation status for Gaston County Schools. Before the 2007-2008 school year, each individual school had to complete a rigorous process every five years to become an accredited school. In 2006, SACS merged with Advanced Ed to form one major accreditation source. With the merger, each individual school was no longer required to participate in an external review site visit. During the 2007-2008 school year, Gaston County Schools was accredited as a school district for the first time. Gaston County Schools was reaccredited during the 2012-2013 school year. Our next external review will take place during the 2017-2018 school year. Once accredited, the accreditation is good for five years. During the second year of the accreditation cycle, Advanced Ed requires the school district to submit a progress report that states how the district has addressed the improvement areas identified during the external review. The three areas Advanced Ed identified as areas of improvement for the school district were wireless infrastructure, instructional expectations, and stakeholder involvement. For each improvement area, the district develop a plan to address each issue. Advanced Ed's first recommendation for the school district was to analyze the current technology infrastructure and formulate plans to provide equitable, comprehensive internet access and speed in all areas 
of all schools and district offices. The plan Gaston County Schools develop has allowed, with the support of the Board of Education, to become completely wireless in all brick and mortar buildings and district offices. The school district has built the infrastructure to allow all schools to implement, implement bring your own device along with guest wireless access at all schools and district offices. All schools may have access when they are ready to implement the program. The school district is also working to reduce the ratio of student to um, device uh, with a goal of moving closer to a one-to-one -one, uh, district in the future. With the support of the Board of Education, we were able to provide 30 desktop computers and 60 Chromebooks to each school. Advanced Ed's second recommendation for the school district was to identify instructional priorities that are expected in each classroom across the district, provide support for their implementation, and monitor for fidelity of implementation. The plan Gaston County Schools develop has allowed the district to purchase a walkthrough software named Teachscape that allows the instruction department to coach teachers and help them implement instructional expectations for our schools. Instruction has established a minimum number of walkthroughs that has to be conducted by school administrators and district staff each week. The district has developed professional development based on the feedback from the walkthrough at PLC and principal meetings. Advanced Ed's final recommendation for the school district was to establish opportunities for stakeholder involvement in meaningful, authentic decision-making roles to help the district determine and support its purpose and direction. In establishing the 2014-16 strategic plan, the superintendent, con superintendent conducted community talks and meet the superintendent night. The community talks involved all Gaston County School staff, community, and Board of Education members. The superintendent also asked for input from staff members on the yearly budget to establish priorities. The superintendent also meets with parents, students, teachers, principals, and assistant principals on a regular basis. The reviewers at Advanced Ed were very complimentary on the progress Gaston County Schools have made in the improvement areas. Thank you. Thank, <clears throat> thank you very much. Do I have any questions? I have a question. Yes, Ms. Guthrie. Last year at the Teaching and Learning Conference, we were able to attend a session on Power School to see the demonstration, which I certainly appreciate it. Um, the walkthrough software, TeachScape, is that something that we can uh, see a demonstration of? I'd like to be able to to see that. I want to know myself what's happening within that piece of software. So is that something that we can see? We can absolutely do that, yes ma'am. <coughs> Thank you. Don't think we have any other questions. Thank you very much for your help tonight. The next item on the agenda is community use and Dr. Baltnight will be the presenter on this. Good evening, members of the board, Chairman Lutz, Superintendent Booker. Tonight I want to share briefly with you just an update. We are beginning to look at our community use fee schedule. We intend to pull a group of community members together along with school-based administrators and our business managers to get some feedback on our schedule and to make some needed changes to the schedule. We have four categories that we use to rent our facilities. We have four nonprofit organizations in our community and non-Gaston County businesses outside of our community, and then of course our school-based organizations, and then our for-profit. So we want to look at those categories and determine with the changes in cost to maintain those facilities how we need to adjust our schedule. I plan to bring a new schedule back to the board for recommendation for approval and then implement shortly after within the community. 
So again, this is just an update for information to let you know. We're beginning to work on that. We've had a lot of questions from the community and feedback, so we feel that it's time to make some changes, but we want to engage the community in the process. Okay. Any questions? Thank you, Dr. Bowen. Uh, any questions from the board? Yes, Mr. Howe. Uh, Mr. Chair, Dr. Bowen, can when you bring that back um, and share that update, can you give us an idea as a board, or at least to me, um, how we look on our fee schedule versus our cost schedule? Um, are we are we making money on this? We're not making money on this. Is the intent to make money on this? Is the intent just to have facilities for the community to use? And, and I know there's a huge difference between for-profit and not-for-profit. If we rent out, look, let's just go hypothetical, an auditorium for a concert that somebody's making $20,000 off of after expenses versus a nonprofit who's trying to obtain something without uh, making money on it. I know there's a difference in that, but mm -hmm. are, are we at a break-even point right now? Or, or are we losing money in our utilities and fees that we're paying our custodians and our and our administrative staff being here so can you bring that back when you bring back some of the uh, recommendations on that use yes sir and one of the reasons why we want to uh, complete the study is so that we can make sure that we align our costs to break even it's a community relationship so it's not a for-profit entity of any kind but as we have different schools that have different requirements for example with lighting Certain schools need more folks to run the lighting for their programs. And so we want to make sure that our fee schedule is very clear to the public. So when they choose to rent a specific place, they're aware that maybe that facility will cost more than using another comparable facility within the school district. And there's a follow up question there too. Do we as a system advocate to our schools to market themselves as a usable facility for the purpose of one um, community involvement? Uh, to maybe generating slight revenue uh, to make some improvements in some areas where they'd like to make it uh, so it becomes kind of a community cooperation thing and doing that. Do, do we allow our schools to, to market themselves to their particular community for that? Or do we, and we can answer this question later if you like, but I'm, I'm just trying to figure out how we utilize our facilities and, and then how much do we market that to the community, you know, as, as something that could be done. So just questions that I'll have for in the future. Okay, and Mr. Howe, I would say briefly that we certainly encourage our schools to work with their communities. Our athletic programs do a good job with our Pop Warner and other community athletic programs to encourage them to utilize our facilities, and we work with them, and then the schools benefit from that as well. Thank you. Mr. Ramsey? Yeah, Dr. Bogner, are you planning on implementing this uh, new feeds by this fall? Uh, sir, we would like to bring it back to the board and get approval and then adequately notify and communicate to the public. So potentially it would be January the 1st. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? I have one. Mr. Dedman? Dr. Ball, I, not to get into this, I know I'm aware of what the instrument is, but we do have in there the ability for a principal to put, to make sure that these groups that are renting our places get police officers and extra security to help them if it's somebody else. Is that correct? Yes, sir. At certain uh, point numbers of participants, then we require additional police officers. And everything goes through our, our office at the central office. And so we have some that works with the, someone that works with the business managers and others in the school to make sure we're consistently uh, working with the community with our fee structure. So it's very consistent, but we also require law enforcement, of course, for security with large events. No other questions, Dr. Bonnet. Thank you. You're free to go. Thank you. The next item, there's four items that I'm going to ask Mr. Holler to come up to present all four of the four next items. Mr. Holler. Thank you, Chairman Lutz, Vice Chairman Ramsey, members of the board, and Superintendent Booker. These are items 16, uh, excuse me, 13 through 16. The first item is the Cherville High School roof replacement which is, uh, if you're familiar with that facility, it has two uh, circles. This is one of the circles that is in need of re-roofing, and we would recommend that that bid, um, that contract go to Mecklenburg Roofing for the stated amount. All right. We'll do these individually, I guess. Yes, sir. I like to, uh, I need a motion. Mr. Collier has made the motion, and Mr. Ramsey has seconded that motion. Is there any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor? It is unanimous. Thank Mr. you. 
Uh, item 14 is an area, a small area of New Hope Elementary School that is in need of re-roofing. And we recommend that uh, be it also be awarded to Mecklenburg Roofing. All right, we'll need that in the form of a motion, Mr. Collier. A second. Mr. Dedman, any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor? And it is unanimous. Mr. Holler. Thank you. Item 15, intercom replacement project at Sherwood Elementary School. Uh, that item we are recommending uh, the bid, the, the award go to Leffler for the stated amount. Thank you. Need a motion. Mr. Ramsey has made the motion. Do I have a second? Ms. Guthrie, any discussion? Questions or discussions? Seeing no questions or discussion, all in favor? And it is unanimous. Mr. Hoffman. Thank you. Item 16 is an intercom replacement project at Bessemer City Middle School, and we are recommending the award go to Ronco for that stated amount. Okay. Thank you. I need that in the form of a motion, Mr. Dedman. Do I have a second, Ms. Cherry? Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you very much, Mr. Thank Hall. you very much. The next item on the agenda is the consent agenda. Um, I'm trusting everyone's had time to take a minute to look at this. Uh, if you would like to go back and ask questions or anything, that would be fine also. Uh, this is an action item, and I will need it in the form of a motion. Mr. Chair, I'll make a motion. Mr. Ramsey has made the motion. Do I have a second? Mr. Collier has made the second. Any discussion? Questions? Seeing no questions or discussion, all in favor? And that is unanimous. The next item is the superintendent's comments. Mr. Booker. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Members of the board, I want to take a moment and <clears throat> roll out this banner. You need help? As part of the nine-week assembly on honesty, good judgment, and perseverance, I was able to attend Gardner Park's assembly. And this is when I walked into the multi-purpose room, what I was greeted with, as well as a T-shirt that all the children had designed. Still working on our Rachel's Challenge. And it was just a great opportunity to be out with the children and the leadership that's been provided at that school. So I just thought you all would like to see some of the great work that our children do. Many of you participated in Saturday's event that was held through the Caramont Community Challenge. It was a very successful event with uh, over 600 participants. And the great thing about that is all of those funds benefit our robotics program. And that is a partnership between Caremont as well as uh, the Rotary Clubs. You may have been getting some interesting calls about kindergarten registration. We have changed our process this year and we had a two week registration and over 2,000 families came out to register children for both kindergarten and pre-K. This is a great service that uh, Student Services decided to centralize and try and help take some of that work off the of schools as well as give good customer service to our community. And I had the opportunity to <coughs> visit the site several days and it was great work done by a lot of our folks. And if you see them, we need to thank them for what was done. Today, I was asked <coughs> by the School Board Association to visit with Senator Tom Tillis. He was in Charlotte 
meeting and as Mr. Collier pointed out in his report about some of the federal program issues related to school nutrition and Senator Tillis was holding a community meeting about that and I spoke on behalf of that to talk about the Healthy Hunger Free Kids Act and some of the successes and challenges we have had with that. So it's good to know that our legislators are out and listening to the concerns similar to what Mr. Collier expressed. Finally, each of you will get tonight um, a report to the community. And this is a document that looks back at this current year that we're in and is a report. And in the center, it summarizes our year in review. And this is just further, as Mr. Jackson talked about in his report, our attempt to communicate with our community and be involved in our community. And on the back page, it talks about what lies ahead for us. It highlights some of the work that you all have put in place uh, for play. And one of the things I would say that it highlights that we continue to be concerned about teacher pay and the focus that we need to be placing on that. And with that, Mr. Chairman, I would ask for a closed session. Okay, thank you, Mr. Berger. Uh, I will need a motion to go into closed session. Mr. Collier? Mr. Chair, I'd like to make a motion to go into closed session under North Carolina General Statute 143-31811A6 for personnel, paragraph A3 for consultation with the attorney, and under the same statute, paragraph A2, A2 for awards. Thank you. Do I have a second? Ms. Roberts has made a second. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor? It is unanimous. We'll be going into closed session. I'll need a motion to go back into open so session. Mr. Ramsey has made the motion. I'll need a second. Ms. Guthrie has second. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion, all in favor? It is unanimous. We're back in open session. Mr. Booker. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, I would like to make a recommendation for the renewal of the following principal contracts. Joey Clinton, James Montgomery, Audrey Devine, Chad Hovis, Phyllis Whitworth, Beth Germain, Christy Gornto, Lana Beam, Mike Grimmer, Roxanne Jemison, Lynn Bennett, Kristen Kaiser, Linda Neely, Emily Smallwood. Thank you, Mr. Booker. Do I have that in the form of a motion? Mr. Ramsey has made that, put that in the form of a motion. Do I have a second? Second. <laughs> I'm sorry. Yeah. Got so many people's <laughs> hands. I saw three hands at one time. Mr. Upchurch, I'll let you do the second. Mr. Okay, Mr. Roberts. <laughs> Mr. Roberts, second. Any discussion? All in favor? Okay, is unanimous. Next motion, Mr. Chairman, member of the board, assistant principal contract renewals. Pam Huffstedler, Justin Beam, Carolyn Black, Mitch Allen, Lisa Pennington, Allison Ryan, Shannon Long, Matt Reichard, Todd Goff, Sean Hubers, Jessica Mellon, Gina Stywalt, Tim Reed, and Lance Frady. Thank you, Mr. Booker. I would also need that in the form of a motion. Mr. Upchurch made the motion. Do I have a second? Mr. Deadman seconded it. Any questions or discussion? Seeing no questions or discussion, all in favor? And it is unanimous. Mr. Booker. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we currently have an interim principal at Webb Street. I would like to install Kelly Howe as the principal at Webb Street. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Booker. I will need that in the form of a motion. So Mr. Ramsey has made the motion. Do I have a second? Ms. Guthrie, any discussion or questions? Seeing no questions or discussion, all in favor? And it is unanimous. Thank you. Uh, next, members of the board, we have had a retirement with our executive director of exceptional children. And I would like to appoint Carrie Minnick as the executive director for exceptional children. Okay, thank you, Mr. Booker. I will need that in the form of a motion. Ms. Guthrie has put that in the form of a motion. Do I have a second? Ms. Cherry seconds it. Any questions or discussion? Seeing no questions or discussion, all in favor? And it is unanimous. Thank you. 
Thank you, sir. Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we have a retirement as Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. I would like to appoint Dr. Kim Maddox as Assistant Superintendent of Human Resources. Thank you. I will need that in the form of motion. Ms. Cherry has made the motion. Do I have a second? Mr. Upchurch seconded. Any questions or discussion? Seeing no questions or discussion, all in favor? And that is unanimous. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I have no other motions. Seeing no other business, Mr. Chair, Coyle, move to adjourn. I have a motion for adjournment. We'll wait just one second. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought we had. Yep, there's one more. Well, can you I'll, put that back I'll, on the table, Doc? Mr. Mr. Carter, thank you. Yes, Ms. McGraw, would you like me to, you want to just let us, you want just make the motion for the the naming? The naming, I, I, we, we have a couple of namings and we need that motion, a motion to that. And we can have, we can read that or if you can remember what we talked about, that'll be fine too. <laughs> Have somebody can read that? Yes. You have it. You have it written down. Miss McGraw has it. Or not, Mr. Hall. Yeah, I know. Jeez. Wait, see. Harper Foundation. Okay. Caramel. Okay. So the Harper Foundation and the Caramel naming. We need a mother. Make a motion to name a room. That the school is designated at Stuart Kramer after the Harper Foundation, and to name a room that the school is des designated at Stuart Kramer for Caramel. Caramel. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Collier. Second. Mr. Deadman has seconded that. Any discussion or remarks? Seeing no discussion or remarks, uh, all in favor? And that is unanimous. Now, is there anything else? What? Oh, you didn't vote? I'm sorry. Okay. I'll make sure they may know that. Okay. Mr. Chair, move to adjourn. Second. I have a motion for an adjournment. Mr. Deadman has seconded. Any discussion? Seeing no discussion. All in favor? We're adjourned.